Tenby today is a popular seaside holiday hotspot for the people of Britain. Known for its sandy beaches, its beautiful architecture, and a surprising number of pubs per square metre. But it wasn't always this way. Founded in 1093 by the Normans as a seaside outpost, Tenby would serve a strategic military purpose for centuries. Speaking of which, a great deal of the Norman castle remains on the hill watching over the sea for any would-be raiders. The iconic castle walls that surround the harbour wall are still standing tall, despite seeing action in the medieval War of the Roses, where it's said that Henry Tudor his and escaped to France via a secret tunnel beneath the streets. Additional battlements were added to these walls in anticipation of the Spanish Armada sailing in, which now form familiar parts of the shopping streets. These walls, crumbled and lost in places, took a battering in the English Civil War when Oliver Cromwell's cannons punched through the defences to seize the town in 1648. We can get an idea of how the town looked back then with the Tudor Merchant House, remaining as a memory from those torrid times. Of course, the Tenby as we know it took shape in Georgian times, with grand townhouses popping up along the sea view, offering rich industrialists a getaway from the filth of the cities. It was around this time, in 1802, when Lord Nelson arrived at Tenby's gates for a short break with his mistress, Emma Hamilton, and her husband, William Hamilton. The maligned menage a trois stayed here at East Rock House on the waterfront. A happily married couple had met Nelson when he was recuperating in Naples after his victory against Napoleon's fleet on the Nile, and the three became inseparable ever since. Despite going against modern sensibilities, Nelson was still a national hero and would have received a celebrity's welcome when they visited this pub to watch a play in the evening. It is said that Emma wasn't offered quite the same adoration, or anything approaching it. It'd be only three years later when Nelson was killed, securing his final victory against the French at the Battle of Trafalgar. And we're reminded of these times by these cannons set into the pier as bollards. It's said that one of these is a real cannon used in battle. The view out to sea here is the same that a young Roald Dahl would have gazed upon when he stayed here in this house every Easter for many years. Perhaps he had heard that George Eliot had been inspired to write her first novel under the pseudonym when staying at this townhouse on the waterfront. And I'm sure with these views, inspiration wasn't hard to come by. Tenby then, as it is now, had become a resort of leisure and inspiration. However, these beaches would take a military role once more in 1944, when the Allies would train for the D-Day landings in Normandy that would happen that summer in World War II. Luckily for us, footprints from Tenby's past remain with us as we gaze out to the sea and into the history. And long may it continue.